Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Evergreen Lutheran Church and our virtual worship for All Saints Day. Uh, today we celebrate uh, the saints, both in heaven and on earth, uh, with a worship that I hope blesses you uh, deeply. This week we have uh, several studies going on. First of all, today at 10 o'clock, you can join uh, Tom McEwen's class via Zoom. And then um, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, twice, there are Zoom meetings that you can participate in. And you will find the links to those um, in last week's Tuesday Newsday and this week's Tuesday Newsday coming up. We will do a communion uh, drive by. Uh, from 2.30 to 4 on Wednesday, and uh, you are all welcome to come to that. Uh, it's safe distance, and uh, I wear gloves and a mask, and uh, we pray together and chat, and it's a very blessed, very blessed time. So hope to see you on Wednesday. We will do a litany of um, the saints' uh, names that you gave us throughout the week and pictures as well. So I pray that you are blessed as we remember those people uh, that you and I love so dearly. Let's take a minute to quiet our hearts and then we will begin. Hello. 
together this day to celebrate all the saints who live in God, both in heaven and on earth. We begin this festive worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. O Christ, the Lamb enthroned above, you call your loved ones home. In, In you, you all saints, saints shall rise. Those believers who have died here on earth now rest in your arms in paradise. In, In you, you all, all saints, saints shall, shall rise. rise. Today we remember Lisa, Stephen, Elizabeth, Willis, Roy, Bev, Tex, and Anna, Jem and Marlene, Bill and Phyllis, Kathy and Kimberly. David, Charles, Bill, Charles, Sonny, Bill and June, Bob, Dell and Ellen, Joan. William and Lawrence, Aaron and Charles and Mildred, Raymond and Annalotta, Aline, Diane, Michelle, Lionel, Betty, Lois, Earl, Addie, Leon, and Joanne. Lucille, Charles, Wanda and Danny, Sandra, Father Ron, Doug, Eileen and Robert, William and Linnea, Ray, Dottie, Walter, and Elaine. He will dwell with them as their God, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. In many and various ways, these saints worshipped and served you here on earth 
and now their new lives are filled with days of endless praise. In you, all saints shall rise. At their births, you call them to be your own and to follow your will. By your grace, you have called them to come into the realms of heaven, where you prepared a special place for them. In, In you, all saints, saints shall rise. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Through the years, your faithful saints made our lives rich with meaning. The generosity of generations has been a strong and faithful witness. In their dying, their generous lives have been enriched by your presence. In, in you, you all saints, saints shall rise. rise. We remember James and Jamie, George and Emma, Ruth, Albert, Kurt, Fred, Kathy, Mick, and Phyllis, Gordon and Kay and Mark, Jana, Betty and Harry, Virginia and OJ, Jean, Larry, Herbert, Agatha, and Harold. Beth, Virginia, Ramon, Catherine and Nathan, John and Ellen, Shirley, Jerry, Woody and Virginia, Harry and Lucille. Dell and Ellen, Oscar and Golda, Bob and Norma, Anne, Rita, Nelda, Herb, Patricia, James and Shirley, Jack, Jim, Joe and Judd, John and Dorothy, Don and Eleanor, Darlene and Paul. We honor the lives of those who touched our lives so deeply. In peace they rest in your loving arms. They reside at your right hand. In, in you, you our loved ones live on forever. forever. In joyful hope, we anxiously await the blessed reunion of all your saints. In, In you, we too shall, shall rise. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant, Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello. Can I have my friends up here this morning or tonight? <laughs> can you sit right here, hon? So we can all kind of crowd around me facing this way so we can see. Do you want to come closer? Oh, man. Do you want to come up tonight right next to me? Is that okay? Perfect. And then you, here, let's, let's, let's all move so we're to closer together so the camera can see all of us. Does someone want to sit here? No? Okay, we're good. Okay, my friends, let's start singing. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face underneath your mask will really show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So what does happy mean? What does our word happy mean? Yeah, tell me. It means that you're joyful. You're joyful, perfect. Any other answers? Yeah. It, it, means that, it means that 
Oh my gosh, that's perfect. That's exactly what it means. So in the gospel today, though, it uses this word a lot. What's that? Blessed. So what does blessed mean then? It is different than happy. I want you to know that. I think it is. So do you have, an, since you gave that incredible meaning of happy, do you have an idea for blessed? You know what, and I, and, and I, you said it so eloquently, I'm just going to say it kind of first grade-ish teachery. It means happy, but with God in your hearts. That's what I think, but I like yours much, much better. So thanks. You know what, I don't know if you knew it or not, but my husband had a really bad accident um, uh, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, yeah, two days ago. And he was using his table saw, and he cut his fingers really bad that, that he doesn't have these two fingers are cut to here, this finger, the tip is off, this thing, the thumb, the tip is off, and this one had to totally be reconstructed. So every single finger was hurt in his accident. So in, in today's gospel, it says that blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted by God. So what does that have to do with my husband? And his accident. Yeah. Yeah. So God, so so he's blessed. He's blessed because God is, is in his life. And, and he's sad, of course, what happened. But because God is in his life, he's blessed. It's pretty amazing, huh? And you know what the other thing is? We, we've been so lucky because people have texted us and they have brought meals over and they, his floor that he was working on when he had that accident, all these people have come over and they were almost done with our floor. A lot of people from our church have come over and helped with the floor. Plus a lot of people from the church have been sending cards and, and, and meals and all that great stuff. So there's also a part in the gospel today that said, Blessed are the merciful, because they will be give, showing mercy. So what do you think that means? Yeah. You guys can talk too. You know that, right? Okay. Exactly. So kindness, right? Kindness. Those people have shown so much kindness to him. And because of that, man, they are getting kindness back by, well, we've been feeding them a lot. That's kind, huh? So we're just so grateful for every, everybody in our lives. So how can you take this lesson and for you guys? What has blessedness shown in your life? Yeah, honey. Exactly, exactly. Even though you mourned, you were blessed by all the people that helped you. And you know what? That's God. Those people, God sent those people, I think. Nice job. You know what? Let's end it with a song. We're going to change it, though. If you're blessed and you know it, clap your hands. If you're blessed and you know it, clap your hands. If you're blessed and you know it, then your face will surely show it. <laughs> if you're blessed and you know it, clap your hands. Should we pray, guys? Yeah. Okay, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for making us blessed. When we are set up, you blessed us. When we are kind to others, you bless us too. We love you for these amazing blessings. In your precious name, amen. Thanks, guys. You guys have a great rest of your day, and happy Halloween. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. 
And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. I have been reading a book called Bear Town, about a small rural town where the mine was shut down, where jobs are scarce and hockey rules. The main character is a little boy who was always the smallest one on his hockey team, which made him even more determined to be better. He said that hockey requires only one thing, your everything. This phrase has kept echoing in my head as I was reading this lesson for today. The Beatitudes are for people who have their hearts set on the reign of God. They are a way of life designed for those who want their life to be a blessing. Beatitude people are those who are willing to embrace these difficult blessings. There is something that will not let them rest until all the world is striving to be just, compassionate, and loving. They call us forth from the cozy ruts of daily living and urge us to be Christ in the world. They tell us that the reign of God is already in our midst if we can bless the world with beatitude living. The beatitudes are values that come straight from the mind and heart of Christ. In the Beatitudes, values like justice, kindness, integrity, and humility come from embracing this way of living. There is something about letting go of our obsession with getting what we want and accepting what life brings us that opens us to be able to enjoy the goodness all around us. And in turn, it opens us up to relate to those around us with compassion. When we can look at another human being, even one who may be an enemy, with compassion, then we can let go of our fears and our preconceived notions that just seeing a human being who is struggling to find happiness, we can be truly kind to those we see in that light. And we can also begin to care about their well-being which means that we care about their peace and their justice, and we accept our calling to relate to them with integrity. Our typical approach to life is that success or wealth or power equals happiness. The problem with that is the more you succeed, the more wealth, the more power you gain, the more you have to lose. And therefore, the more you relate to life in fear and compassion, or in fear and competition. This way of life leads us to think that we can only be happy in life by winning, by beating someone else in the game, or by being and betting uh, that someone else will lose. As Barbara Brown Taylor says, the Beatitudes are a statement of the world turned upside down, where those who mourn are comforted rather than abandon or merely pitied, where those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are satisfied, not ignored or shut down, where the meek inherit the earth rather than being ground into the dust. In other words, much is at stake. As for those who seek to follow Jesus Christ, we are called to embody a completely different vision of life. 
We are called to spend our days working to extend God's mercy to the left out and the beaten down in this world, to seek to establish God's peace and justice for all the dispossessed and disenfranchised of this world. We are called to align our lives with those whom the world despises and rejects, which means that we too will be despised and rejected because of our commitment to God's mercy of peace and justice. But like those whom the world tramples down, when we align our lives in the way that we can also rejoice when God's will is done on earth as in heaven. God blesses because God's grace knows no bounds. For by grace we are saved through faith. And not of ours. It is a gift from God. There is no one beyond God's reach. No one who is beyond hope. In the kingdom of God, even the spiritually destitute can come and find their place. May God grant us the courage to embark on that path of life, to walk in the light that our Savior Jesus Christ has brought to us, and so find the true secret to blessedness. Like the boy in Beartown, our life of faith as blessed disciples of Christ requires only one thing, your everything. Where is just up here? Uh, those who know me well will agree I'm a bit of a storyteller, which is a nice way of saying long-winded. But uh, the Beatitudes are quite the story. I have a feeling that's why you wanted me to talk about this. So let's get into character a little bit. I want to put myself in this story. Let's say I'm a, a brewer or a night watchman or maybe a shepherd, all of which I dabble in real life. In unincorporated Galilee, I'm broke as a joke, but I've got some free time to kill. On Sunday, I hear there's this guy, Jesus. He's making a lot of noise around Galilee for his teachings. I hear he's just getting baptized, whatever that is. I hear he's doing these unexplainable things that people can't or won't do. I hear he's fresh off some extended fast, and he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil like, like Charlie Daniels or something. Well, I start hiking around this little mountain range, and I, then I see the people, normal people, hundreds, maybe even thousands. There's this guy at the top of the hill, and these people are surrounding him. It's, it's like red rocks. He's kind of a dark-complected fellow with just common clothing. That must be the guy. And I walk down there thinking, I can't believe I'm wasting an entire Sunday just to listen to this guy. But I'll give him a chance. i got nothing better going on. Then he speaks. You ever get that feeling like when someone is talking to you, they're speaking directly to you, like into your soul? He was. The way he talked, it was like he filled up every heart that listened to him with deep love and understanding. Not like I was a hormone crazed teenager in front of a boy band concert kind of crazy. No, this was like a father telling each of his hundreds of children that they are not forgotten, no matter how broke or lost or selfish they are. I was expecting this judgy charlatan to make me feel guilty and shameful about all my sinful deeds. Maybe ask for some donations at the end of this thing, you know, for the cause. Man, I was wrong. He talked about the poor in spirit, the mourners, the meek, the peacekeepers, I like that one, the persecuted, those who hunger for righteousness. All those little things I did in my life, I didn't realize anybody knew that I did them, 
This guy, Jesus, he seemed to know. It's like the common guy was every bit as powerful in spirit as the nobleman. So I ask everyone, put yourself into this story. Believe this story, this gospel, because it happened. Imagine you stumbled upon Jesus Christ himself, speaking directly to you, face to face, the face of God. God's only son telling you that you are blessed and the little things you do that no one notices to walk a righteous path are indeed noticed and God is overwhelmed with joy at the person that you have become. This is not a guilt and shame scenario. These are the emotions we put on ourselves that we don't meet God's needs. They push us away from God. Now the Beatitudes are a referendum that Jesus our righteous brother in human flesh knows our struggle, expects our mistakes, and blesses us with deep love, forgiveness, and compassion. He only asks that you live the best that you can in the same way alongside your fellow men, women, and children. Jesus does speak to us. Many of us, myself included, are anxious to hear from God, some sort of a sign or a reflection. But do we forget to make sure God hears from us? We must pay attention to God's subtle direction in all of our lives. Little emotions and intuitions, they are every bit as divine as they are biological. Listen to them. The Beatitudes allow us a chance to listen to God. That's the story I hear. So usually I turn to the Beatitudes for comfort. During times of struggle, stress, or grief, anger, or frustration, I long to hear the soothing and reassuring promises. However, this week, when I probably am living in the world with the most stress, anxiety, fear, and worry that I might ever experience, an annoying and nagging question just wouldn't leave me alone. Two words. By whom? By whom? The question kept tapping me on the shoulder. The hungry and thirsty will be filled. By whom? Those mourning will be comforted. By whom? The merciful will be shown mercy. By whom? The Sermon on the Mount was preached by Jesus after he invited the first group of disciples. He was beginning his ministry and starting to turn the world upside down. Raj Nadella, associate professor of New Testament at Columbia Theological Seminary, suggests that within this literary context, the Beatitudes should be read as Jesus' manifesto for transformation in the community that he just inaugurated. They reveal what the new community will look like. With this context in mind, I even more felt the call to action. These are big visions, huge goals and ideals that will not change the status quo only, but change the world forever. Just like the disciples were ripped from their comfortable lives, I too am being called out of my comfort zone of my own home, my own safety bubble in COVID-19, my complacency and my fear to be part of God's kingdom and work for others. This call became even more clear as I read further on in Matthew. I hope that's allowed. Uh, in the next verse, Jesus states, You are the salt of the earth. And continues one verse later, You are the light of the world. Can't get more clear than that. We are called to be the salt of the earth. We are called to be Christ's light in the world. We are called to comfort the morning, fill the hungry, and show mercy. We are called to advocate for the oppressed. In fact, Nadella continues that the translation of the Greek word for comfort actually is closer to the verb to advocate. He writes, the verb suggests that those who mourn will receive advocacy, not just comfort and consolation. As followers of Jesus, we're called to advocate on behalf of the oppressed and do everything in our capacity to reverse their current situation. He continues, by stating that instead of asking, where is God, when people are hungry, mourning, and denied mercy, instead, the question should be, where is God's community, and what is it doing to reverse the situation? 
On this All Saints Sunday, I believe we're called to live into this paradox that Martin Luther introduced. Luther believed that we are simultaneously saints and sinners. And this makes the idea all the more powerful to me that God is calling me a sinner, someone who messes up, gets too complacent, worries too much, focuses only on herself, to be God's saint in the world and advocate for others. So as we take comfort in the Beatitudes and advocacy of others when we need it, may we also listen to the oppressed, amplify their voices, and work to reverse their situation. May we be the salt of the earth. May we be God's light in the world. The hymn of the day. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Lord of all nations, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common ground. Hear us, O God. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. We call to mind those who are struggling today, and we pray for those listed in our prayer list. Hear us, O God. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those whom we have loved throughout the years and who have died in you. In faith, may we join our hearts and voice with them in eternal praise. Hear us, O God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. We are always grateful for your offering of gifts. Uh, we are uh, grateful for your loving generosity and we invite it uh, over and over again in order to sustain the ministry of the church you love. So thank you so much for um, your gifts of love. Let us pray. Gracious God, as grains of wheat are gathered for bread and grapes together are poured out as wine, so, so may we be united, united in your presence through this sacrament of grace. 
then filled with your power, send us into the world as leaven for those hungering and thirsting for you. Amen. I invite you this morning to make sure you have bread and wine available that you might bless uh, the body and blood of Jesus with your own powerful and loving hands. The great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give God, God thanks, thanks and praise. praise. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us this beautiful morning in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the children of God. May you be nourished, you dear saints of God, this All Saints Day. Shall we gather at the river? Where bright angel feet have trod, with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margins of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we all our burdens down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide a robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease, soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river, Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen each one of us and keep us 
in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, our creator, at this table you have satisfied us with the good things of your grace. Fix our, our hearts, hearts on your mercy and truth, and truth that, that our, our lives filled, filled with your, your Holy Spirit, Spirit may reflect your love for all creation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you deep, deep peace this day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. Be merciful. Remember, feed, and love the poor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hope your day and your week is blessed. Please stay safe and healthy and strong, and we'll see you next week. God bless.